what's going on guys? It's your boy Sessa here. There's a video here today bringing you guys a Photoshop tutorial on how to create your very uncool, clean, simplistic UI banner design, something along those lines. Banner design style, yeah, sure. Um, so as you can see my example here, it's really cool, very fun, um, very clean, very simple as well. Uh, it all just comes with, I didn't have enough time for me to explore it too much as I, much as I wanted to and kind of like make super, super cool. But of course it left bare bone in a way that you guys of course create it and make it your own. Um, all that good stuff, I just wanna go, just kind of jump into this one right here personally. And uh, yeah, 275 likes on that video, you can see it down below, which will most likely be the PSD that you guys see here today. Um, all that good stuff, I just wanna say I appreciate all of you guys that are new subscribers, uh, so this is new subscribers here. Um, like just a lot of you guys are coming through and I appreciate you so very much and I hope you guys enjoy your stay, all the good stuff. And if you guys are new to this video right here, right now, please be sure to, of course, leave a like and, you know, subscribe, please. Okay, that's all. Uh, talk to you guys in a second. Let's do it. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this right here, right now. So my example here, I'm gonna actually start off with the, of course, the text and kind of the typography of it, and then just kind of move into the little background elements, which is really fun. Um, like I said, it's like a UI element kind of inspired kind of deal. I don't know what it is about me being clean and kind of like what he's saying, it's a UI. I know what a UI is, by the way. I just mean like elements in which that just look like things you would see in UI. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get this thing going. I'm gonna hide this, and of course, I'll start off with, of course, the text, which I believe is this is Gotham, right? Yeah, this is Gotham. I called it clean UI, and I'm just gonna go ahead and center this off towards the left hand side. And I'm also gonna make it, <coughs> excuse me, dual toned. So I'm gonna just kind of make the UI just plain old white. And I'm gonna go ahead and give this uh, background color. I believe I actually have a, whatchamacallit, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna use this yellow right here. All the actual hex codes will be, of course, in this box, but to say it, the yellow that I'm using in today's video is F6D13C. That's a nice little yellow going on here. And the background gray tone that I will be using is not gonna be this one, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and just unlock this for a second. Double click on here. Go to my color overlay, and the background color that I'm gonna be using is actually this one right here, which is 17181B. Press OK, press OK again. And now we have a nice little clean sort of like look going on so i mean this is pretty close to what's going on over here when it comes to the uh, example image right so let's just keep on uh going so i want to go ahead and on my background layer really quickly actually is i want to make a new layer and give myself a secondary color that's going on in the background so i'm gonna go ahead and just use this color right here which is this nice little offset gray right here um or like a bluish kind of it's not purely black but it's of course like a nice little blue hint into it uh this is the hex code right here i'm gonna go ahead and press okay I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like click and drag. You'll see the colors, of course, shift more, maybe not in my rendered version of the video, but when you do it yourself, you'll see the hues do kind of, uh, not clash, but uh, complement each other very well. And you just wanna erase a few spots. So right now for me, I kind of just have it more in a quadrant where it's just like right around here, right? And right around here, okay? So like this is filled in, this is filled in kind of thing, right? So once I have that, then you're pretty much good to go ahead and just say, let's focus on the text really quick now. So I'm gonna have a uh, clean UI here. I'm gonna have banner design style, or for you, whatever happens to be what you're designing it for, whether it's for like an individual, just, I don't know, just make sure you, I always think like cool little sub kind of text, uh, meaning like not your header text. So the header text might just end up being like the actual name. Um, some text can be just like their title, what they do, et cetera, et cetera, or you know, something like that. Um, I always think it's really strong to put that in there because it just helps your typography out, right? I'm gonna just make it pure white for a second. Look at this again, right? So you have pure white, and then you have these little slashes that are going on here. So the slashes are just simply just add, end up doing uh, text, right? Oops, right? Nice and new text. And I just use the backslash right above the enter key, okay? Then I went ahead and changed it to yellow, of course. I want to shrink this down to the good size of the banner design. Now, even though I, I want to shrink it down, but I don't want it to lose its thickness. So in that, in that way, I'm just going to go ahead, right? And once I kind of put it in the centering of... I guess you would say like this centering of, oops, there we go, like this this kind of centering right here, right? I'm using my, uh, my uh, print screen a little bit more, but I just want to kind of get more of an illustration of what I'm going to do before I do it, because I wanted to have it more like that. So of course I have to cut off the top and the bottom, right? So the way I'm just going to end up doing that is go ahead, right click, and uh, rasterize type. I'm going to take my rectangle marquee tool. I'm going to take it, I'm going to right click, or click just right above the actual B, go over to the left hand side, Delete right under the B, go over to the left hand side and delete. And now I can just take this and just kind of move it over and use my guidelines to make sure I can have it perfectly spaced uh, correctly. You can see the little, uh, these little pink boxes here saying that it's spaced correctly. Do it one more time because why not? Nice little four. Uh, good. Cool. So now this little box over here is just, uh, I think I use, what do you call it? The uh, rounded rectangle tool. I think it's right here. <laughs> rounded rectangle. Click and drag just like so. 
Now, I'm gonna turn off the stroke. So this kind of works like Illustrator. So you, of course, you have your fill, you have your stroke. I'm gonna turn off the stroke, which is this little red dash here. I'm gonna turn on my fill, which is gonna be the color I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna uh, choose this box on the top right, by the way. This allows me to choose my color. I'm gonna click on the background color for a second. Then I'm gonna take this and just move it a little further up, press OK, and that'll be what I'm gonna kind of start off with. If I need to change it, I can always, of course, change it. But once I've done this, I'm gonna go ahead and just rasterize this layer really quick which is just simply means I uh, no longer have it as a shape object. That way I can just right click, uh, excuse me, not right click, use a rectangle marquee tool, click and drag and give myself halfway point between like this little slash dotted lines here, just kind of kind of make it even that way, right? Then press delete on your keyboard, then you kind of have this nice little simple cutout box, which is right under your actual text. Almost feels like a nice little header holding the actual, uh, how do you say, the, the text. Um, so, take my fill, lower this down a bit, and I believe it was lower down the fill, and I went ahead and just manually did the actual stroke. So, uh, what, okay, so in that way, I lowered on my fill to about 20%. This is basically lowering your opacity as well. Um, it's the same exact thing. However, lowering your fill to zero or lowering your opacity to zero will, of course, get rid of everything. Lowering your fill to zero will uh, get rid of everything that you guys see on the actual screen, but keep all your layer styles. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and click on this. I'm going to go to stroke. I'm just going to go ahead and use a nice little white stroke just like so. Right now, if I actually want to, and I'm actually feeling like I want to do this, I want to go ahead and make a new layer before I do this. So I'm going to make a new layer, right? And on this new layer, I'm actually going to take the fill and move it all the way down to zero. Duplicate on this. And uh, by the way, new layer, I meant duplicate the layer. So I'm going to duplicate this layer right here, right? Control J, double click on it, put on a uh, stroke, put it to white, make sure my opacity is all the way up. And my size, I'll put it to like, we'll put it to one. And I'll make sure my fill is all the way at zero uh, as well, right? So that way, the only thing that's showing on this layer is that stroke that you guys see with no actual color on it. Then I'm going to right-click, convert it to a smart object. Then to erase, I will use the layer mask, right? Just click on that. It'll make this nice little box here. When you click on this box, your colors from your primary colors of your foreground and your background change to white and black. So if you take a black uh, color, like if I take erase, the white eraser right now, it's not going to do anything. Or a white brush, is not going to do anything. But if I change my brush to a black, it'll erase. So I'm going to take this. And erase the white line on the top and just leave it just like so. I think that looks pretty good. Cool. So to kind of finalize this, I'm gonna put a nice little box here, uh, right under this little corner here, because I just thought that looked cool and I felt like I'm gonna do it again. Okay. Boom. White box. I just use the marquee tool. Go ahead and say like that. Now you see this line right here. If it's not too much, if you want to delete it, you can delete it. But if you don't see it too much, you can go back into your layer style. Take your uh, brush, make it white. And kind of go up just like so to kind of make it show a little bit more again. I think you're good there. So we have our nice little left hand side little box going on here. We can actually group all this together if we would want to, right? Control G. And uh, to actually select everything in between the layers you select is you click on the first layer, you hold shift, and you click on the last that you want to have that uh, selects everything in between, right? So I want to click on this one so it selects everything in between. Control, excuse me, G. And uh, we're going to call this left text or just like main text. Okay. Cool, I'm gonna move that right here. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna go ahead and use a, the right hand side would be just very simple as well with this little, uh, simple little, how do you say, social media box, right? So for this, I'm gonna simply just kind of take my uh, new layer here. I'm gonna use a right side marquee tool just to start it off, right? I'm gonna make it as thick as I personally would want. I think right about here is okay. Um, it can be thicker, smaller, whatever, skinnier, but I'm not gonna make it super accurate to what it is on the other side, but just like this. Okay, now this box color here, I believe is the th second to last color that's in this little uh, color picker here. So this is the gray 3E4048. Uh, press OK, press OK again. Now with this layer here, I'm gonna take another record to right single marquee tool, right? Control, Shift, N is how I make really quick layers. By the way, I've, done, I've been doing this so much, I don't even like use a new layer button. I just press Control, Shift, and N. Make a new layer, right? Then you just fill this in with Alt Backspace. Just uh, that, what Alt Backspace does is quick fills your main color, right? Uh, into your box. So control D to deselect. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this a little bit. I can hold actually shift while I rotate. That'll rotate on 15 degree angles. So that way you get a perfect 15 degree angle. Then what you can do is you can control click on this actual box right here, right? You get rid of it now. Then you go back to the box that has the actual shape here. Then you just press delete on your keyboard and now you have a nice little cut right there. So I couldn't do this super, super fast, but just the people who don't know how to do this kind of thing, I kind of like, of course, slow it down for you guys, but now that nine box is kind of cut, of course you can use a pen tool by the way, but the boxing is actually way faster when you of course do it at a speed that's fast. Um, so, I'm gonna type in the words Twitter, okay? And I'm gonna put the little Twitter stuff in here as well. Let's just do this really quick.
All right, really quickly, I just wanted to go ahead and do this hypography for it. So the actual Twitter is Gotham Black, uh, and the actual, oh, excuse me, Gotham period, which is a little bit of a skinnier uh, typeface. And then the actual word Cecil HQ is a nice Gotham Black, which is, of course, a little more thicker than the actual typeface. So that we have a nice little difference between. So you have Twitter, of course, is then going to be Cecil HQ. Kind of the way you read it and the way it kind of is mentioned is uh, how I kind of want to have it. So for the actual box here, right, I ended up just going ahead and making a new layer. I'm going to kind of hover over this box to make sure I get it the same size right just like so kind of make a nice little box right move that right in the middle uh, close to of course your actual text now on this new layer that i already have right i'm going to go ahead and use the same color right click fill use this color right around here just like so press ok press ok again right click deselect or control d and then this time besides making a new layer this might be a little bit faster if i just take my uh pen tool if i just click on the left hand side around this corner hold shift click over here right if you click on an angle on holding shift it makes it a perfect 45 degree angle by the way right i can connect it make a selection and then delete it now we have a nice little cut there and of course then i can put in my little uh twitter how do you say logo let me just do that really quick as well all right perfect twitter is now in there i'm actually going to change these two colors to a more of an offset white which is not pure white but just quite not quite there but now that looks pretty good right there so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my twitter header my box uh, so my Twitter, uh, this is my Twitter box and the actual Twitter logo and the two texts that go right to it. I'm going to make a couple. Maybe I'll make three, but I have to make this smaller then. I'm going to make it a little more smaller then. So I'm going to take them all really quickly. Control T to make it smaller to fit inside my box. Just like so, I think it's pretty good. Now, of course, I can make my box longer, but at this point, you get it, right? A little bit longer, I'll make it. Sure. All right, nice little breathing room there. Now, to actually make these little quick little indentions, so you can see these little things right here, it makes it look really cool. That's actually super simple to do. You just use a new layer. You take your marquee tool. You just go ahead and click and make a nice little simple one pixel line. You fill that in with a dark color. I'm going to use, of course, black, right? And then you can just go ahead and press Control J to make a duplicate. Move it over one pixel by using your arrow key, right? So you're going to have it like literally right next to it. And this one over here will just be a nice color being, you can just make it white actually. So if you press control U on your keyboard, you can make anything white immediately. You're just taking your control U on your keyboard, which is the use iteration table. You take your lightness and you move this all the way up to 100%. You press okay. You take this, move it to uh, soft light. Then you take your eraser. Nice soft brush eraser. I'm going to make the eraser smaller, of course, soft brush, which means zero hardness. You click it and kind of do like that. All right, so if you zoom out, it kind of looks like these little cool little indentions you guys used to see. Uh, not used to see it back. In, I, I mean, used to see them back in the day. It was my favorite thing to do in, in the universe. But nowadays, you don't really see it too much. It's kind of like a little fun little way to separate uh, very evenly. Um, yeah, I like how that looks. Sweet. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and kind of finish off with these simple little aesthetic parts of it, which is basically being like, of course, you can fix the color as well. Also, there's a little weird box down here. I did the little weird box just simply just literally clicking on it. Go back to the main text, make a new layer on it. It should be below it. Okay. I'm going to take a nice little re re rectangle marquee tool. All right. I make that little nice little weird box. I put it in there on, on purpose because it just added nothing, but it also added something. You ever, you ever feel like that? I feel like that all the time. Okay. So the little dark shader here is, you guys know about it. You guys should probably, you guys should know how to do this, right? So you're going to make a new layer. Okay. You're going to click, hold shift, hold shift again to make an angle. Click over. Now you click outside the canvas because it doesn't really matter what goes on over here. Then you connect it. On your new layer, you want to right click, make selection, press OK. Now you want to use a soft brush, right? Make it pretty big. <laughs> soft brush means zero hardness again, by the way. I'm going to use a dark color. So I'm going to use this black. If it's not uh, dark enough, you can take it and move it a little bit further down. You can just go ahead and copy this hex code, right? And you can click just like so. Kind of like not close to the line, but a little bit further away. So your soft brush is hitting it rather than really hardness in the middle, right? So if I click, kind of go around, control D to deselect. Now you'll see nice little indentions go uh, going on here. You take your eraser and fix it, right? That looks pretty good. I like it. So you want to make it darker. If it, if it wasn't dark enough for you, press control U on your keyboard. You take your lightness and lower it down just like so. And now it's pretty good and nice and perfectly dark. I can make a new layer, right? Take my brush. Hardness, 100%, right? Size, 2. Pen tool, click, click, right? Now that I changed my brush sizes to what those are, I can go to right click, uh, stroke path, drop down, use the brush, uh, stroke path, you press OK, right click, delete the path, and now you can't tell, but it, it takes the color of your foreground color, but if you just go ahead and go in here and go to your color overlay, 
right on that new layer you just made. You can make it yellow. Now you have a nice little yellow going on there. You can make it a little more vibrant. Okay, I would like to take my eraser, erase the edges, and kind of make it look more of like a stroke. Like, it looks pretty cool. Cool. So, I guess last but not least, this little part of it is kind of like doing the fun little kind of, uh, how do you say, little waves, right? So the way I did the waves, pretty simple. I'm going to go right on under my actual main text. This should be the thing that's all the way on the bottom right next to your actual uh, background. There you go. So, click and just make waves. I literally just take the pen tool, drag it right, drag left, kind of make it a little more perfect, but kind of move these in. All right, let's try again. Click, drag, drag, drag. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you got to move it, I'm holding control, by the way, taking these points, kind of making a little bit more like, there we go, kind of a little bit less terrible. You guys know the deal. There we go. Okay, so I can go ahead and connect it now. Right click, fill path, and we'll just use one of these grays right here, right, for the color. Now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna press, uh, from, take my blender from normal to, uh, I believe, mm, I'll change it from normal to, let's actually go with actually not changing it at all, and go to my opacity here, we'll put it at 20% here, and I'm gonna press Control J to make a duplicate on this, right? Just move it down a little bit, and I'll go ahead and just change this one to about maybe like 15 or so, enter, yeah, that looks good. I'll just actually control click on these two. Control T to free transform. I can just move it over so I can go more towards the actual, uh, more kind of covering the entire banner. I can rotate it if I want to as well. There we go. Now it's definitely covering more of the actual banner design. Sweet. And a little sort of little, like little aesthetic parts that I did was kind of add a yellow here. Really, really awkwardly off, like off, uh, off meta you don't really see kind of random little shapes there but it kind of helps fill these weird empty spaces that feel empty so i'm gonna go ahead and just do that right and then i'll make a new layer fill in the yellow again nice little skinny yellow and it kind of just helps fill the eye and of course i'll take this and get rid of this as well um but yeah uh last but not least i guess you would say is if you want to put a gradient on your actual text i'll just go back to my text make a new layer alt you take it right Nice soft brush, and we'll take this, move this to an orange, and on this new layer, we just kind of make a nice little gradient. You can put the gradient pretty much everywhere. If you want to make a new layer above the actual little lines you just made, you can put a gradient there as well. Gradients do really add to this as well. I'd definitely go ahead and go about it. Um, but this right here as well, if you want to add a nice little shape down here, right? A nice little yellow bar. That's not the yellow we use. Get this yellow, right? That looks good. And uh, if you want to go ahead and use brushes as well, I have a nice little UI brushes. I believe it's in volume two. I just went ahead, took a nice little white brush on a new layer. Okay. Click right here. We'll use soft light. Click up here. Soft light. And I'll link these brushes down below, by the way, if you guys would like to get them. But yeah, I mean, super, super simple stuff here. And it just makes a nice little clean design. Um... Hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. It's not too difficult. It's not, it, it's also a lot of room open to kind of like exploring and having fun with your own kind of style to it. Um, but yeah, just something like to think differently and just enjoy it. Uh, with that being said, bros and homies and I was going to say hoes, but you know, be safe out there. Uh, much love. I'll talk to you guys later. Seso HQ out. Do not forget to keep smiling and stay positive and stay freaking productive guys. Later. Much love. And of course, just like appreciate you guys so very much. And uh, yeah. Later.